Anania, nerds in paradise. A particularly arduous drive around the island of Banania in the rattly old bus included deftly dodging the combined hazards of axle-breaking potholes and manic oncoming drivers. This left the Diggy Beat team bounced about and completely exhausted. No sat-nav system or even paper maps existed on Banania. This guaranteed their driving down the wrong roads, which inevitably ended at someone's house or in the middle of a coconut grove. The next morning they moaned and groaned about it over coffee, which made a pleasant change as they normally moaned and groaned about the quality of the coffee. Emma Thompson was a truly wonderful cook. But unfortunately, she'd never quite mastered the art of creating a truly good cup of coffee. Which was one of the things they missed after leaving Amsterdam. Predictably though, as they discussed their arduous bus journey, an idea was born. Why not give the old bus real satellite mapping for real road navigation, not only to show each twist and turn, but also to warn of incoming traffic. But it took quite some days for the Diggy Beat team to perfect a navigation system for the old bus, which they named SADI, or Self-Automating Drive and Intelligence Exchange System. <laughs> well, not the most snappy name, but these were nerds, remember, not poets. Well, as the system developed, the team added useful little functions, like a set of video cameras to let Sadie know where she was driving and what was approaching on all sides. A microphone was added so they could speak orders to Sadie rather than typing them and an extensive set of loudspeakers ensured that the system could not only give the driver navigational instructions, but communicate with other road users. Nobody could quite remember who'd actually suggested that one, or whether it served any real useful purpose. It was just one of those things that seemed a, a good idea at the time. Well, after driving along the same route several times, the navigation display didn't merely show the corners and bends that were coming up, but the potholes too, with bright red warnings and cries of alert, pothole at 12 o'clock, evade, evade. But the first serious hint that Sadie's artificial intelligence system was really functioning was one morning as Nigel Nickleby and Connor O'Connor, Diggy Beat's directors, were driving to the Technode, which housed their offices, workshop and staff accommodation. Driving by the fish market, Connor wound down his window and was about to greet a friendly stall holder, as he did every morning. But before he could open his mouth, the old bus preempted him by calling out, Morning, Bertie, how's it going? But even that wasn't enough for the Diggy Beats team of incurable nerds. Oh no, 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 no. Not satisfied with providing their old bus with digital navigation, which exchanged pleasantries with the local populace, and artificial intelligence so that it could teach itself the island's maze of twisty little roads, they began to brainstorm ideas of converting the old bus to actually drive, all by itself. This would, of course, 
involve robotic controls and sensors capable of copying a human's driving behavior, then, with practice they believed, it would continue to improve and become completely autonomous. All went well for some weeks as, little by little, the team gave control of the bus to Sadie. First came the system which overrode the brakes if it sensed a potential emergency. Then it was allowed to control the gas pedal to keep the bus moving smoothly and safely. Then after much clever engineering, Sadie was able to co-steer the bus, giving little tugs to the steering wheel if it didn't quite agree with the driver. And when all the obvious bugs were removed, the great day came when Sadie was allowed to undertake a journey to drive the bus all by herself. Of course, during these development days, her vocabulary and her circle of friends increased dramatically. And no journey through town was complete without an almost continual banter with the local populace, who would stop, wave and shout greetings back to the old bus. Well, after a while, Nigel and Connor got used to their minibus talking to passers-by, and everything went smoothly. Well, that is, apart from the occasions when they would be forced to drive behind a particularly slow truck or smoky, defective automobile. Then, through the old bus's sound system, Sadie would shout strong recommendations at the offending vehicle focused, of course, on improving the driver's road usage skills. Well, sadly, this was not always taken with what Sadie felt to be the appropriate amount of appreciation. And Sadie never forgot abusive responses, but dutifully filed them away in her ever-expanding memory. One of Sadie's most consistent frustrations was with the ancient truck driven by Wally Withers, the banana farmer. For no known reason, Wally would choose to drive his truck along the very same little road by the Diggy Beat directors at exactly the same time they drove back home. And this would be at such a painfully slow pace that it at least doubled their commuting time. And even when they left earlier or later, there again was this ancient truck, overloaded with bananas, crawling majestically down the middle of the narrow lane, with Sadie shouting helpful instructions at it. Frustrating though this was, and even amusing, as Sadie's vocabulary expanded, it wasn't really a cause of concern. Uh, that is, until one particular Saturday morning. Nigel and Connor were driving through St Hilda's to the tech node to collect some members of the team to go snorkelling. By now, they simply left the driving in Sadie's very capable hands. That was if she had any hands, of course, which she hadn't. But anyway, um, they were now used to Sadie taking slight detours down back streets to avoid congestion uh, which were often caused by a recalcitrant goat or a, a donkey in the middle of the road and this morning driving near to the fruit market they discovered themselves diverted down a little side street. Well, up ahead of them they saw a furtive figure who occasionally looked anxiously over his shoulder at their bus, then increased his pace as he saw them gaining on him. As he did so, the old minibus would speed up too, until the poor man was running as fast as he could to get away from them, and the bus was gaining on him. By now, they recognised the unfortunate man. It was Wally Withers, the often bad-tempered banana farmer, driver of the ancient traffic-blocking truck, 
and now Sadie's arch enemy. Well, at first, Nigel and Connor believed it to be a coincidence that they were both just travelling down the same street on the very same day. They got a little more concerned, though, when Wally took a sudden left turn down an alleyway, and with a screeching of tortured tyres, the old bus did too. At the end of the alleyway, Wally ran desperately across busy, traffic-filled Front Street and down another side street. To everyone's shock and horror, the old Diggy Beat bus did exactly the same, without even a hint of slowing down. Traffic screeched to a halt, vendors fell over carts, and passers-by generally huffed, tutted, and wagged accusatory fingers at the quickly disappearing vehicle. None of this seemed to concern Sadie at all. Whereas Nigel and Connor, the bus's unfortunate passengers, were both white-faced with terror. Nigel with hands over his eyes and Connor with his fingers in his ears. Uh, Sadie, uh, please stop, whimpered Nigel. Connor, though, took a different approach. You have to let beasties like this know who's the boss. Sadie, stop, stop, desist this instant with all this gadding about. Oi! I say stop, cease, bad bus, naughty bus, heel, sit, Sadie, sit, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, now. As Connor continued his tirade, Wally Withers desperately zigzagged, then took a sharp right down another small street, a sudden left, then over the marina footpath and with one last enormous effort dived straight into the sheltering waters of the marina. Interestingly, Connor's last desperate, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, no, coincided with the old bus reaching the marina's edge. Whereupon it did indeed stop, and very suddenly indeed. Fortunately, Sadie refrained from making any clever comments as Wally flailed about in the water, whimpering in fear. The old bus just stood there at the water's edge making low, almost primeval growling noises. Nigel and Connor tumbled out of the bus, happy to be alive and free of their manic vehicle. Hastily they assisted Wally out of the water, all the time with furtive glances back at the bus, which was still making threatening growling sounds. As Wally furtively slipped away into the gathering crowd, Nigel and Connor, still badly shaken by their recent near-death experience, held a rapidly convened council of war. But this they did some distance from the bus, so that Sadie would not overhear them. Oh, I don't know, Nigel, began Connor. We did too good a job at teaching Sadie to do all that driving about. And not only that, she's gotten a mind of her own, so she has. Aye, and, and she remembers who insulted her too, and wants revenge. Now that was something we didn't expect, mused Nigel. Typical woman, so she is, complained Connor. Can't let bygones be bygones. Always out to get her own back. And they never forget, so they don't. So what are we going to do about her, wondered Nigel. We can't just leave her to run around chasing people she doesn't like. She's going to wipe out half the island before she's finished. You're going to have to disable her, declared Connor. Do you know how? Yes, there's a, there's a switch under the dashboard, but she won't like it very much, whispered Nigel. Can't be helped, said Connor. As soon as we're in, just switch her off. Then tomorrow... You're going to have to get the lads to disassemble her, just in case. By this time, the crowd had lost interest and dispersed, and the van had stopped growling. So Nigel and Connor climbed aboard, and Nigel immediately switched off the master override switch, then carefully drove onto the technode to pick up the waiting team. The rest of the day passed without incident. After that afternoon of snorkelling, Nigel dutifully drove the team back to the tech node. 
where they enjoyed a well-deserved meal of freshly harpooned lionfish.